Over the course of several decades, scientists who have speculated about the existence of life beyond Earth have questioned themselves such as what life might look like, how humans might be able to recognize it from a distance, and whether or not communication between the two worlds is even possible. This thinking has led to the creation of classification systems that is ready to be filled by aliens. Welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Quick reminder, subscribing is free, linking the video helps YouTube suggest similar videos. Comments are loved and featured in upcoming videos. Experts believe that as civilization develops bigger and more complex, its energy consumption will skyrocket owing to population expansion and the energy demands of its different technologies. With this in mind, the Kardashev scale was created as a means of quantifying a civilization's technological advancement based on the amount of usable energy it has. This was originally just tied to the energy available for communications, but has since been expanded. What is the Kardashev scale? The Kardashev scale is a classification system for hypothetical civilizations that exist beyond our own planet. Nikolai Kardashev, a Russian scientist, came up with the initial concept for the scale in 1964, who was looking for signs of extraterrestrial life within cosmic signals. It contains three basic classifications, each with a different amount of energy disposal, type 1, 2, and 3. The scale has been expanded by other astronomers to include type 4 and 5. The energy available to this kind of civilization would equal that of all energy available in not just our universe, but in all universes and in all timelines. These additions take into account both energy availability and the amount of knowledge available to civilizations. Now let's talk about some of its classifications. A Type 1 label is given to species that have harnessed all of the available energy from a nearby star, accumulating and storing it to fulfill the energy needs of a developing population. In order to achieve this status, we would need to increase our present energy output by more than 100,000 times. On the other hand, if we were able to extract all of the energy that the Earth has to offer, it would also mean that we could exert influence over all of the natural forces that exist. Volcanoes, earthquakes, and even the weather might all be influenced by human activity. At least, that seems to be the general consensus. It is difficult to imagine that these types of accomplishments have been accomplished, but in light of the potential developments that may lie ahead, these levels of control are basic and naive. It is nothing in comparison to the capabilities of civilizations that are ranked higher. A Type II civilization is the next level ahead, and it has the ability to harness the power of its whole star not merely transforming starlight into energy, but controlling the star. Many other methods have been suggested for achieving this goal. The hypothetical Dyson Sphere is by far the most well-known of these concepts. This device, if you want to call it that, would cover every single square inch of the star, capturing the vast majority of the star's production of energy and transferring it to a planet for later use. Alternatively, if the species has mastered fusion power, the process that drives stars, a very massive reactor might be employed to meet their needs. Nearby gas giants may be used for hydrogen, which is progressively depleted by an orbiting reactor. What effects will such a high amount of energy have on a species? As far as we know, there is no scientifically plausible way to eradicate a Type II civilization. For example, if humanity were to live long enough to attain this position and an object the size of the Moon entered our solar system on a collision path with our small blue planet, we would have the power to evaporate the moon-sized object and make it disappear. However, if we had enough time, we could reposition our planet such that it would totally miss the impact. But let's imagine that we didn't want to relocate the Earth. Are there any other possibilities? To answer your questions, absolutely, since we'd have the capacity to relocate Jupiter or another planet of our choosing into the path of the asteroid, which would be pretty fantastic, wouldn't it? So we've gone from having power over a planet to having control over a star, which has resulted in us having enough disposable energy to effectively render our civilization resistant to extinction. However, in Type 3, a species becomes galactic traversers with knowledge of everything related to energy, resulting in them becoming a master race. In terms of human beings, it is possible that hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, both biological and mechanical, will have resulted in the inhabitants of this Type 3 civilization being drastically different from the human race as we know it. It's possible that they are cyborgs, also known as cybernetic organisms, which are creatures that are both biological and artificial. These completely biological beings would most certainly be seen as crippled, inferior, or unevolved by their cybernetic counterparts. 
At this point, we would have created colonies of robots that are capable of self-replication. As they spread out over the galaxy and colonies star after star, their number may climb into the millions. Kardashev didn't progress his scale any farther than Type 3 since he thought a Type 4 society was already too advanced. He was under the impression that this must be the limit of the capabilities of any given species. Even though the majority of people share this opinion, others still maintain that there is room for improvement in later stages. I mean, there must be some kind of limit, right? Type 4 civilizations would virtually be able to harness the energy content of the whole universe, and with that ability, they would be able to traverse the ever-increasing distance between stars. Furthermore, advanced races of these species may live inside supermassive black holes. Type 5 Yes, Type 5 may be the next step for such a civilization. In this world, intelligent creatures would be on par with gods, armed with the wisdom to shape the cosmos however they see fit. In order to accomplish this goal, the first thing that has to be done is to protect the planet that we call home, put an end to all hostilities, and maintain our commitment to promoting scientific progress and discovery. Where are humans on the Kardashev scale? To begin, it is important to note that the human species has yet to reach this level. We are a type zero civilization here on Earth, since we still get the majority of our energy from dead plants and animals. This puts us in the lowest category, and we have a long way to go before being promoted to a type one civilization. According to the well-known theoretical physicist, Michio Kaku, all factors considered, type one will be reached between 100 and 200 years from now. Who was Nikolai Kardashev? Nikolai Kardashev was an astronomer who worked in both the Soviet Union and Russia. He passed away in 2019. Kardashev's research was approximately contemporaneous with early pioneers in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, such as Frank Drake, who published his famous equation three years before Kardashev's article, Giuseppe Coccioni, and Philip Morris, who projected what an extraterrestrial signal may look like, and Freeman Dyson, who wondered how alien civilizations might transcend the constraints of a planet. In addition to his scale, Kardashev invented a method that is known as Very Long Baseline Interferometry, or VLBI. This method employs a worldwide network of radio dishes to create the illusion of a single radio telescope that is the size of the Earth. The Event Horizon Telescope makes use of Very Long Baseline Interferometry, or VLBI for short, in order to detect black holes and produce the very first picture of a black hole, which was released in 2019. Additionally, Kardashev recommended adding space-based telescopes to the Earth-based network VLBI observatories to boost its observation potential even further. According to an assessment of VLBI advancements, he urged the Russian mission Radio Astron, which launched in 2011, to undertake exactly this kind of research. Nonetheless, the paper's actual core, which included Kardashev's scale, was a bigger statement about SETI. It's easy to forget that what he really did was assess whether or not it would be technically possible to communicate between stars. Furthermore, Kardashev argues in the conclusion of the paper that even if the calculations don't hold up, the possible actuality of interstellar communications should still be considered plausible. Kardashev stated, We would want to emphasize that the figures reached here are undoubtedly preliminary. However, they all point to the fact that assuming that civilization on Earth is not a one-of-a-kind occurrence in the entirety of the cosmos, then the possibility of establishing contact with other civilizations through the use of the capabilities of radio physics that are available today is not only plausible, but also highly likely. That concludes today's video. We sincerely hope you have found the video entertaining. Please leave any questions or comments below. Remember to subscribe to our channel to view more of our amazing videos.